So these are the three main science. There are, there are other science, of course. We have tafsir, exegesis, we have a hadith. But based on this hadith, these are the three main branches or three main sciences of Islam, uh, of deen. We have the fiqh, we have the aqidah, and we have the tazkiyah. Fortunately, uh, in today's age, we have certain clerics, doctors, other people who are talking about deen. And what they do is they talk about Hanafi, Shafi'i, Maliki. And then what they do is they'll mention this hadith. Look, 72 sects will enter the fire of Jahannam. Implying that Shafi'i, Maliki, Na'udh Billah is also part of the 72. Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al-khulafai al-rashidin al-mahdiyin. Follow my sunnah and the sunnah of my rightly guided khulafa. And as you know, students, welcome to Mughayara, to differentiate between two things, two concepts or two entities or two phenomena. So down here, the Prophet ﷺ has used sunnah for himself and then he's used sunnah for his sahaba. The notion of only following Quran and Hadith is against Quran and Hadith. So you know this, or Quran and Hadith, ekta or in in only char kar diya. You know, Quran hadith is one and then made into four. This is a propaganda. The reality is there was hundreds of schools. This is the reality. There was hundreds of schools. Every every city and every town had their own faqih and alim who they would refer to. This is through the, the queen uh, will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's restricted them into four. Because books don't answer, men answer. Yes, books help. Remember, I'm not, I'm not uh, downplaying or diminishing the importance of books. What I'm saying when it comes to pragmatic practice, when you come into the arena to respond, you know when a fitna kada ho jai? Yes? When a fitna starts in a place, people respond. We have many books, thousands of books in the libraries, but they don't respond. We have men that respond. We have people that respond who make the effort. So I was taught Allah Khalid Mahmood used to say on Surah Fatiha, that is se do chize maalum hu. We know two things from Surah Fatiha. Kutub hidayat and rijali hidayat. Kutub hidayat and rijali hidayat. The books of guidance and the men of guidance. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, al Ali al Wahid, al Alim al Fard al Ghani al Majid. Wafdul al Salat wa Taslima ala al Nabi al Mustafa al Karim wa alihi wa sahbihi al Athar la siyama rafiqhu fi al Ghara ma baad. فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله واستغفر لذنبك وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات صدق الله العظيم My dear respected brothers so the first, our first session is regarding the Hanafi school. So before I speak, uh, I give a, a brief history on the Hanafi school. I want to remind everyone regarding the famous hadith, also known as the hadith of Jibrail. Yes, a very famous hadith in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was asked certain questions I'm sure most of you if not all of you you must have heard of this hadith yes uh, what is Iman what is Islam what is Ihsan and then the final part of the hadith the Prophet Alaihi Wasallam was asked regarding eschatology some of the signs of the final hour but the main three questions that were asked and thereafter answered were Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. And when this person left the gathering, Prophet ﷺ asked Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala, do you know who this person was? Do you know who the Sa'il questioner was? He said, Allahu wa Rasuluhu a'lam. He said, فَإِنَّهُ جِبْرَائِيلْ أَتَاكُمْ يُعَلِّمُكُمْ دِينَكُمْ أَوْ كَمَا قَالْ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. This was Jibrail Amin who came to teach you your deen. So deen, <coughs> according to this hadith, which is a fundamental hadith in the science of hadith, uh, is uh, three things. A comprise of three things. Islam, Iman and Ihsan. 
I think we can unanimously agree uh, amongst the scholars that these three are the three main components of deen. Islam, Iman and Ihsan. And if we reflect on the answers of the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, how did he define Islam? And tashhad an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Yes. Wa tuqeem as-salah wa tu'ti az-zakah wa tasum ramadan The five pillars as we say. That to bear testimony there is no deity but Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger to establish salah, yes, to give zakat, to fast in the month of Ramadan and to do hajj for those who are able. So these five pillars or five external actions of our deen is known as Islam. Each pillar is related to the external aspect of our deen. Yes, these are actions, a'mal, which are to do with the external, meaning the body. Our body are in, uh, they're in, is involved in internalizing, yes, these actions. Iman, how did the Prophet ﷺ define Iman? أَن تُؤْمِنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَتُؤْمِنَ بِالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَالشَّرِّهِ أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم That you have firm belief, conviction, certitude, yaqeen, iman Yes, on six articles of faith بِاللَّهِ Allah وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ The angels وَرُسُلِهِ Sorry, مَلَائِكَتِهِ Yes, angels وَرُسُلِهِ The prophets And the final day And um, uh, the books, kutubihi, all of the books, scriptures, and preordained matters, taqdeer. So these six articles of faith, these six articles of faith are related to the internal aspect of our deen. Because the mahal and the locus of these six articles of faith, where is it? Where is it? The heart. Yes? And then we had ihsan, where the Prophet ﷺ explains <coughs> God consciousness. That in all of your harakat and sakanat, all of your movements and all of your actions and your worship, you are in such a state as though you are seeing Allah. And if you cannot attain this stage, then know that Allah is watching you. So we have Islam, we have Iman and we have Ihsan. Islam, which deals with the external or the outward aspect of our deen, the science that deals with this is fiqh. Yes? Yes or no? What is the job of fiqh, jurisprudence? The job of fiqh is to navigate our life through the external aspects of our deen in terms of uh, you know, halal and haram, right and wrong, do's and don'ts. And this is why the books of fiqh, the books of fiqh, they deal with this external aspect of our deen. So the science that deals with the external aspect of our deen is fiqh. Then we have iman. Iman is to do with the internal aspect of our deen. The science that deals with the internal aspect of our deen is known as aqidah. Aqidah. This is why the word aqidah is not a Quranic or a hadith discourse is a technical term that was invented by scholars after. You know, sometimes we have brothers who say, you know, Akhi, you don't talk about Aqidah. Yes? So the, the word Aqidah was devised later by scholars. Is the word Aqidah is not, you don't find the word Aqidah in Quran to have this Aqidah. The Quranic discourse deals with Iman. Iman is the Quranic word and the word that is found in the hadith is Iman. But the word Aqidah is what? It is a word that, ha that was devised by scholars later, yes, to protect the Imaniyah, to protect the six articles of faith. And then of course you have uh, development within Aqidah which is Ilmul Kalam, yes, Ilmul Kalam, schol scholastic theology or dialectical theology or um, uh, you know, speculative theology, these are all names, but usually in uh, Western academic literature, Kalam is referred to as Kalam. They don't translate Kalam. Kalam is Kalam. 
Yes. Uh, so Kalam, you could say, is an advan advanced form of Aqidah. The main difference or differentia between Kalam and Aqidah is differentia, yani the Fasl, Fasl Qareeb. In Mantik, you study Fasl Qareeb. Yes, the closest approximate differentia between uh, Aqidah books and Kalam books is that if you open Aqidah books, generally speaking, you only have one stage there, which is Ithbatul Aqaid bi Adillatiha. If you open books of Aqaid, usually you only find one type of discourse, is where they establish the Aqidah, uh, the tenets of faith through evidence, basic evidence. Sometimes the evidence might be brief, sometimes the evidence might be elaborative. Yes? Whereas in uh, Kalam books, you have a second stage too. You have Ithbatul Aqaid, you have the Aqaid with the evidences as well as Daf'u Shubahat. Answering objections, answering obfuscations. This is the wazifa, or you could say the role and the function of the books of Kalam. Okay. So anyway, Iman. The science of Iman is Aqidah. And then you have Ihsan. The science of Ihsan is Tasawwuf and the Sufiya. Some people have allergy with this word, you know, Tasawwuf and Sufi. So you can just say Tazkiyah. Yeah, Tazkiyah, those scholars that specialize in uh, cleanliness of spiritual diseases is uh, Tazkiyah, Sufis. That's Ihsan. So these are the three main sciences. There are, there are other sciences, of course. We have Tafsir, Exegesis, we have a Hadith. But based on this Hadith, these are the three main branches or three main sciences of Islam, uh, of Deen. We have the Fiqh, we have the Aqidah, and we have the Tazkiyah. Now moving on to uh, the Hanafi Fiqh. Uh, The one group that will enter Jannah, yes, as per hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned. Uh, this hadith, although might be weak, if you look at it from a, a solitary narration, but if you look at the different narrations, the ulama say it does have uh, somewhat strength and it's acceptable. It's the hadith where the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said that the, that the Banu Israel, yes, they were they were divided into 72 sects and my ummah will be divided into 73. Uh, one of them will enter Jannah and the rest will go to the uh, fire, fire of Jahannam. And the Sahaba say, Ya Rasulullah, which is this one group, he said, Ma ana alayhi wa ashabi, o kama qal sallallahu alayhi wa The people or the group that is on my path and the path of my Sahaba. So, just let's just concentrate on this hadith for a while. This one group that will enter Jannah. Or let's look at the other, uh, the, the, the other group, 72 sects. Why will they enter the fire of Jahannam? Why will they enter the fire of Jahannam? Does anybody know? The 72 groups that will enter the fire of Jahannam. Why will they enter? What is the reason? What is their main reason? They're disbelieving. Disbelieving... Uh, Ha, by the way, this is, is referring to the Muslim Ummah. Yes, not all of them, even those groups that will enter uh, fire of Jahannam, they will not all enter because of Kufr. It's because of differences, yes? Iftiraq, as the Hadith mentions, wa taftariku ummati. It will be because of differences. The 72 groups that will enter the fire of Jahannam will enter because of differences and this is why we need to understand that differences are of types yes the famous categorization usul and furu we have fundamental differences and then we have subsidiary differences fundamental differences are those differences which are to do with the iman imaniyat as mentioned you know the in the hadith jibrail and subsidiary issues are those which are to do with interpretations yes and there's room for differences ishtihad etc so these 72 sects, if you pick up Sharistani, for example, al millu Wal-Nihal, yes, uh, where he, 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 he discusses these sects. Likewise, Mullah Ali Qaid, rahmatullah, has also mentioned these sects. Um, 
the common thing that you will find in these 72 sects is that they all have a difference to do with usul. It's fundamental. Now, where do you exactly draw the line between uh, usul and furu? This is again is a uh, scholastic discourse, and people have written on this. Uh, but what we need to know for now is that the difference of usul is very clear to the conscious. You know, a, a person doesn't have to be a scholar or even a student of knowledge to understand that this is a major difference. For example, within these 72 sects, we have a large group amongst the Shia, the Rawafil. Uh, one of their core tenets is that the Quran has been changed. Yeah, therefore, their famous scholar, Nur Tabarasi, who's who is uh, buried in the blessed land, uh, quote-unquote, in Iran. He's wrote a book, um, uh, you know, Al-Qawl, Al-Qawl Tamam, Al-Qawl Ithbat, uh, Al-Qawl something, Fi Ithbat Tahrifi Kitab Rabbi Al-Arbab. You can find the PDF on this, online. And he's argued for, Na'udhu Billah, the interpolation of the Quran, that the Quran has been changed. So a large group, comprises of the Rawafil. Then you have the Mu'tazilites, yes, the hyper-rationalists. Uh, they believe, for example, that the punishment, the adab, or the thawab reward of the grave doesn't exist. Again, is this a usuli difference or furu'i difference? Usuli, yes. I mean, you, you could see that the difference is, is significant, yes. A person's conscious, it will reject these tenets, especially normal Muslim. As he's practicing, praying their salah, they might not have much knowledge, but even they will be, they will find these views alien. So if we analyze each group that will enter the fire of Jahannam, the common factor is, is usuli difference, fundamental difference. Now there's one group that will enter Jannah. Yes, there's one group which the Prophet ﷺ said, Ma ana alayhi. There's a few things, brothers, I want you to remember about this group. Because unfortunately, uh, in today's age, we have certain clerics, doctors, other people who are talking about deen. And what they do is they talk about Hanafi, Shafi'i, Maliki. And then what they do is they'll mention this hadith. Look, 72 sects will enter the fire of Jahannam. Implying that Shafi'i, Maliki, Na'udhi Billah is also part of the. 72. And this is, is on the record. I'm, I, don't, I don't want to mention the names. But on YouTube you find such discourse. Um, so today's objective is, is not just to make Hanafi the saved sect. Rather, is to understand that this one group that will enter Jannah is a very large group which also accommodates the Hanafi school. Yes? Um, and it's very important because uh, today, one of the narratives that have been pushed is Hanafi, Shafi'i, Maliki is what? They are sects, Na'udhi Billah. This is what we need to understand. They're not sects. The school of thoughts, as we will see, they're not sects. Sects are, are those who will enter the fire of uh, Jahannam. There is one lecture on, on YouTube where the person, the speaker said, look, Quran and Hadith is one. Prophet Ali is our Prophet, you know, Allah is one, Prophet Ali Islam is one, Quran is one, Hadith is one. And the schools of thought, they're from the 72 sects. And there's a large congregation, thousands of people, millions probably watching online. Uh, and then he said something. He said, No Sahabi said, I'm a Shafi'i. No Sahabi said, I'm a Hanafi. No Sahabi said, I'm a Maliki. And the uh, crowd started clapping, Wahji, Dr. Sahab, Kamal Kardiya. We've never, seen, we've never heard such an evidence in our life. And that is one of the most pathetic evidences that you can present in academia. It's absolutely, it's called fallacy. It's, it's, it's a fallacy of the highest order. Because what you're insinuating, when you say which Sahabi is a Shafi'i, which Sahabi is a Maliki? Of course, he was saying in a rhetorical way. He wasn't asking the question literally. He was, he was saying in a rhetorical way, implying that because these schools did not exist in the time of the Sahaba, therefore we should utterly reject them. 
But if you are going to imply that same principle, then you have to reject the entire corpus of hadith. Because no sahabi said, Rawahu al-Bukhari, or Rawahu Muslim, or Rawahu Tirmidhi. Yes. Khair, people are people, awama, awam, they're all clapping and mashallah, you know, he, he thought, he, you know, he made a point that nobody's ever, you know, thought of. But unfortunately, this is the time that we're living in, people are making these points, which have no uh, evidence and no soundness, but people are spreading them forward. This is why it's our job as students of knowledge to understand the intricacies of these issues and the principles. So this one group that will enter Jannah, I want to start off with the first point. That this group is a big or very big? Is it large or very large? I mean, we can confidently say that this group is very large. Why? Because it comes in the hadith of Tirmidhi and other hadith, but the Prophet ﷺ said that 120 rows that will enter to Jannah on the day of judgment, 80 of those rows will be from this Ummah. And there are many other narrations. Uh, that you can check afterwards, inshallah. I'm just hinting towards one or two. Where we can postulate and extract that this one group that will enter Jannah is not a small group, it's a very large group. This is the first thing. The second thing about this one big group is what is the name of this group? So the name of this group is Ahlul Sunnah Wal Jama'ah. Uh, the person who gave, who gave this name was Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. So if you pick up uh, tafsir of uh, you know, Ibn Abi Hatim rahimahullah or you pick up Imam Suyut rahmatullah alayhi Zadur Manthur and other tafsir who usually bring narrations or even Tabari, perhaps I haven't checked in Tabari but probably there, under the verse, يَوْمَ تَبْيَضُّ وَجُوهُمْ وَتَسْوَدُّ وَجُوهُ You'll find the narration there where Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma he names the saved sect as Ahlul Sunnah Wal Jama'ah. So is that the second point? What point is that? Second point. The third point regarding this hadith is that when we look at the word Ahlul Sunnah Wal Jama'ah, what does Ahlul Sunnah Wal Jama'ah mean? So Ahlul Sunnah here means the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Jama'ah, the congregation or group, is referring to the group of the Sahaba, primarily speaking. Yes, primary, mistaq, awwal, is the group of the Sahaba, Ridwanullahi alayhim, ajma'in. So we follow the Sunnah of the Prophet and the Sahaba. This is very important, my dear brothers. That we follow the Sunnah of the Prophet and the Sahaba. Islam has made a distinction. Alaykum bi sunnati. Follow my sunnah and the sunnah of my rightly guided khulafa. And as you know, students, welcome to Mughayara, to differentiate between two things, two concepts or two entities or two phenomena. So down here, the Prophet ﷺ has used sunnah for himself and then he's used sunnah for his sahaba. Meaning, meaning, that all of the sunan will not transpire or manifest in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, they will manifest after his demise. This is why the, sec the second adhan for Jummah, did this exist in the time of the Prophet ﷺ? No. Not even Abu Bakr, not even Umar. Who started this? Uthmani Ghani. But now it's a sunnah. Yes? Nobody says, well, you know, it didn't exist in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, therefore we're not going to follow you, Billah. So Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Sunnah of the Sahaba and the method of the uh, Sunnah of the Prophet and the method of the Sahaba. It's very important that we, we, we make this clarification. Because this clearly refutes and repudiates the notion of only following Quran and Hadith. Quran and Hadith. It will not be misplaced to suggest that the notion of only, fo only following Qur'an and Hadith is against Qur'an and Hadith. The notion of only following Qur'an and Hadith is against Qur'an and Hadith. Which, hadith, which, which verse is it against of the Qur'an? Surah Fatiha. Ihdina al-sirat al-mustaqeem. 
Sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim. O oh Allah, show us the true path. Yes? The, uh, the straight path. Sirat mustaqim. And then Allah Himself has identified this path. Sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim. The path of those upon whom you bestowed your blessing. And this is a unanimous uh, opinion of the scholars that the most strongest form of Quranic exegesis is when the Quran explains itself. So from Surah Fatiha, we know that the straight path are the path of those who, upon whom Allah has bestowed His blessing. Who are these people? This is what we need to know now. So what did Allah say? وَمَن يُتِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ These are the four categories. مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ Prophets Shuhada, Siddiqeen, those who speak the truth. Shuhada, the martyrs and the righteous Salihin. So these are the four different types of people whom we ask Allah, that, oh Allah, show us their path. Make us walk on their path. So I Ustad Allama Khalid Mahmood used to say on Surah Fatiha, that is se do chize ma'loom hu. We know two things from Surah Fatiha. Kutubi Hidayat and Rijali Hidayat. Kutubi Hidayat and Rijali Hidayat. The books of guidance and the men of guidance. The books of guidance and the men of guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't send a book on his own. He sends a prophet. Yes? If book itself was sufficient, then why did Allah send a prophet with the book? We have, you know, we have this uh, plumber or his engineer from Pakistan. Yes? Is, you know, he says, you know, he doesn't believe in the deen of the Babi, meaning the elders. He just, he, he, he believes in the deen of the books. Yes? He presents himself to be a sumo academic. And this is against Surah Fatiha. If it's only books, why did Allah send prophets? And if it was books, why did Allah Say Sirat al Ladina. Yes, Sirat al Kutub. Sirat al Quran, al Furqan, al Injil, al Torah. Allah mentioned the men, Sirat al Ladina. Al Ladina, yes, is referring to Minan Nabiyin, was Siddiqin, was Shahadai, was Salihin. So, as much as books are important, but for practical guidance, for practical and pragmatic guidance, we need men. We need we need men. Subhanallah. So, this, this claim that you only follow Quran and Hadith is against this verse of the Quran. If it was Hadith, it's Sirat al Hadith, Sirat al Rasul. Why did Allah say Sirat al Ladin an'amta alayhim? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't even say stay away from these books. He said stay away from these men. Ghayr al Maghdubi alayhim wa al because books don't answer, men answer. Yes, books help. Remember, I'm not, I'm not uh, downplaying or diminishing the importance of books. What I'm saying when it comes to pragmatic practice, when you come into the arena to respond, you know when a fitna kada ho jai? Yes? When a fitna starts in a place, people respond. We have many books, thousand books in the libraries, but they don't respond. We have men that respond. We have people that respond who make the effort. So, this is very important that Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, this clearly repudiates the notion that you follow only Quran and Quran and Hadith. This is an unheard, you know, it's, it's, it's unprecedented. You know, nobody ever just followed Quran and Hadith. You can't. Practically speaking, you can't. Let me give you an example. In Muslim, there's a Hadith. Although the chapters, they were not enti uh, uh, entitled by Imam Muslim himself, some say Imam Nabawi, some say others. But the hadith is uh, where the Prophet ﷺ said, Tawadda'u mimma mastatin nar. The hadith is sahih, it's in Muslim. Prophet ﷺ said, a perform ablution, yes, from that which is touched by fire. Yani, anything that is made through fire, you have to do wudu. So you have your dudpati, wudu, your biryani, wudu. 
Yes, anything that you eat, you have to do wudu. I mean, you don't, you don't do wudu, yes, but the hadith, if you take the hadith literally, you have to wudu. The hadith after, it says the Prophet Ali Salatu was salam, Akala katifa shatin fa salla wa lam yitabadda au kama kal. The Prophet Ali Salatu was salam, he consumed and he ate the shoulder of a sheep and he performed salah without doing wudu. So one hadith is saying do wudu, the other is saying, don't do wudu. So what do you do? Yes? Likewise, in Tirmidhi, yes, the Asatis, the teacher, Tirmidhi, they will, they will tell you the entire Tirmidhi is one chapter is saying, say, Amin loud, the other is saying, say, Amin quiet. One chapter is saying, uh, pray your two rakats sunnah, uh, straight after the farad, yes, like the Arabs do, the other one says, no, after the sunnahs, reason. One chapter is saying that the uh, iqama should be ifrad, meaning single. The other one saying no, it should be double. The entire Tirmidhi is like this, most of Tirmidhi. So what do you do? It's the same muhaddith, same book of hadith. If you're following only hadith, how do you uh, solve this conundrum? How do you solve this problem? Yes. So this is where we have fuqaha. This is where we have the science of fiqh. Because we don't follow fuqaha in everything. But remember this, when it comes to f uh, following the fuqaha, we don't follow, we don't follow Imam Abu Hanifa in the kalima, for example. Or how many times salah we pray, no. We only follow the fuqaha, mujtahideen, on, in those matters where there is ambiguity, number one. And there's contradictory evidence. There's ambiguity and there's contradictory evidence. If it was clear-cut, unambiguous, muhkam, then there would be no difference of opinion. So going back to this hadith, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So number one, this is a very large group. It was named by Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah. It also clearly postulates you have to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet and Sunnah of the Sahaba. Suggesting to follow hadith only contradicts the Quran, Surah Fatiha, as well as the hadith. Yes? Now, the one group, uh, the 72 groups that will enter the fire of Jahannam. I mentioned their differences are what? Usul. The differences are Usul. There's one large group that will enter Jannah, they will also have differences. There's one large group that will enter Jannah, they will also have differences. But their differences will be, finish the sentence, subsidiary, furu. Yes? The three things you need to remember about furui differences. Number one is a human's nature. It's a human's nature. Ghaliban was as Gangoi rahmatullah said that there's only two occasions where people will not differ with you. Number one, where there's no intellect. He doesn't understand anything, what is he gonna differ about? Yes? Or number two, khain, deceptive person. A person who's not honest. He has a personal agenda, he will not differ with you. He, he's, he, he needs to get something from you. Wherever there's intellect and wherever there's honesty, people will differ. Wherever there's intellect and wherever there's honesty, wherever there's aql and adal, people will differ. And this happens in every sphere of life, in every sector. Yes, doctors differ, engineers differ, scientists differ, doctors differ, dentists differ, we all, everybody differs. So number one is a human's nature. Number two, this these types of differences are transmitted from the Sahaba. They are transmitted from the Sahaba. If you pick up Musannaf of Imam Ibn Abi Shayba rahmatullahi alayhi, the teacher of Imam Bukhari, the recent uh, print, not re for four or five years now, with Sheikh Muhammad, uh, Sheikh uh, Awama's uh, Tahqiq, that 25 volume magnum opus, I think you could encapsulate that into five or six or maybe seven different Sahaba who used to give fatwa and there's books written on this the Fuqaha Sabah, the seven Fuqaha of Medina that would give fatwa in the time of the Sahaba there are differences in Bukhari we find so many, so many differences where the, the tribe of Ashariyin they went to Abu Musa Ashari to ask a question regarding Mirah this is in Bukhari Asked a question regarding Mirath inheritance, so it, it, was, it, was a, it was not a clear cut masala. So he gave his opinion, but he said, first go to Abdullah bin 
Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala an. And also ask him regarding the same mas'ala, the same issue. And then come back to me and let me know what answer he gives. So they went to Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala an, this group of people. Abdullah bin Mas'ud gave a totally different answer. And they came back and they informed of Musa Ashari radiyallahu ta'ala an, who is also a faqih. He said his answer was this. Do you know what he said? He said, لا تسألوني ما دام هذا الحبر فيكم. Do not ask me any questions as long as this ocean of knowledge is residing amongst you. Yes. So number one is a human's nature. Number two is transmitted from the Sahaba. When Imam Abu Hanif rahmatullahi alayhi says, do not raise your hand in salah. He's taken the opinion of Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala, who has a clear cut hadith, authentic hadith in Tirmidhi, an nasai unauthenticated by Albani. When Imam Shafi rahmatullahi alayhi says, raise your hands, for example, he's taking his hadith from Bukhari Abdullah bin Umar, for example, radiallahu anhuma. So these differences have been taken from the Sahaba. And number three, which is the most important point, that this type of difference has been approved taqreer by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The famous example, you must have heard this example countless of times, and it's usually given in this discourse, where the Sahaba came back from Ahazab, the battle of Ahazab, and the Prophet wasalam, instructed the Sahaba to go to Banu Quraidha. And he said, لا يصلي ين أحد العصر إلا في بني قريضة وكما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم that nobody should pray the Asr except after reaching Banu Quraidha. So the Sahaba stayed off their journey halfway through. The time of Asr came, and there was a dispute. When should, should we offer Asr? Shall we pray Asr now whilst traveling on route to Banu Quraidha, or shall we pray after we reach our destination? So, certain Sahaba, they said, no, we should pray now. Because once we reach Banu Qurayza, the Salah time will be Qadha. And Asr would have been gone out of his time. Then the group of Sahaba said, no, we, we need to pray in Banu Qurayza. Now, subhanAllah, both of the groups, they were using the same hadith. The group that suggested that we pray Asr in Banu Qurayza, they said, yes, the Prophet ﷺ did say pray Asr. In Banu Quraidha, yes, sorry, those who prayed the Salah on their way, those who prayed Salah on the way, they said, yes, the Prophet ﷺ did say pray Asr in Banu Quraidha, but what he meant by this was that haste in your journey, be quick in your journey so you reach Banu Quraidha for the time of Asr. And those Sahaba that said no, they, 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 they adhered more to the zahir of the nas. They said, no, the Prophet Islam said, pray asr in Banu Quraidha. There's no explanation. Be quick, pray asr there, khalas. Whether it's qada or adaw, we have to pray there. This entire case came to Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam. Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam said, both salats accepted. That's paraphrasing the hadith. He didn't uh, censure any of them that your salah is you know, accepted and your isn't. No. Why? Because it's a, a difference of opinion. Yes, it's a subsidiary issue, and the scope of these types of differences. So this furu'i uh, furu ikhtilaf has always existed in the time of the Sahaba. So you know this, or oh, Quran hadith ek tha or in inhone char kar diya. You know, Quran hadith is one and then made into four. This is a propaganda. The reality is, there was hundreds of schools. This is the reality. There was hundreds of schools. Every, uh, every city and every town had their own faqih and alim who they would refer to. This is through the taqweeni uh, will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's restricted them into four. But these differences of opinion, there were many. This is why the scholars say that these four schools, they're imtidad limadar sahaba They're an extension of the schools of the sahaba. These four schools that we have, they are extension of the schools of the sahaba. So for example, in Makkah, Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he had his school and students. His school is Imam Shafi'i rahmatullahi alayhi. Imam in Madinat Munawwara, you had Zayd bin Thabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He had his students, famous uh, uh, you know, uh, classes, etc. Uh, his school is Imam uh, Malik rahmatullahi alayhi. In Kufa, you had uh, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. His school is Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi. So these four schools. The reality is, and the fact is, that they're an extension of the schools of the Sahaba. 
And subhanallah, hikam, why, why do we have these false schools? Amongst the wisdom that the ulama write is one is that is, 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 is ease for the ummah. We have you know, many different ways. Sometimes you can adopt different opinions based on darura, based on necessity. Something happens, you know, scholars then they give fatwa, look at uh, different various uh, valid opinions, of course. Yes, not fatwa shopping that we have sometimes nowadays within the uh, parameters of sharia. Because if it's only one way, only one way, then it would be difficult. And also, amongst the wisdom scholars write is Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam, he, he carried out these actions in different intervals of his life. Yes? At one point he raised his hands, and then at one point he didn't raise his hands. And these actions were so beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he wanted all of his actions to stay alive till the Qiyamah. Therefore, he used the four schools to do this. Yes? Among other hikam and wisdom that the ulama have mentioned. So, after this backdrop, now going to the Hanafi school. So now you understand Hanafi is not amongst the 72 sects. It's one of the large, it's, among, it's from the large group which will enter Jannah inshallah. And a lot of the differences have been taken from the Sahaba. So therefore, you know, uh, and dare I say, audaciously, uh, the speaker that I was referring to earlier on, when he said with audacity and without any shame to be quite frank that the 70, uh, these four groups, Na'udhu Billah, they're from the 72 sects. This is a very severe allegation because what, what you're saying, in, uh, uh, what you're implying, although his niyat wasn't this, I'm sure, is that these differences, a lot of the differences from the Sahaba. Where does that leave the Sahaba? Yes, they also had these differences. This is why the verse of the Quran, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا Tafarraqu, hold firm unto the rope of Allah and do not differ. One interpretation is, do not differ in usul. Yes, not furu. Because Sahaba did one Allah's mind, they differed. Or the second interpretation, as Imam Qurtubi rahmatullahi Ali mentioned, that this iftaraqi means that difference of opinion which leads to hatred and animosity. Where you can't sit together. Why? Because the verse after is indicative to this. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا Subhanallah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the Sahaba that at one, at one time they were, you know, they were enemies and they didn't like each other but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam you know, Allah united uh, their hearts and they became brothers. So the second interpretation is that that your differences, especially if they're furu'i, especially if they're furu'i, your differences shouldn't lead uh, to, to such hatred and distance that you are not able to sit with each other and you don't have that relationship anymore. Yeah. للعلم كنا نلتقي والحب والإخلاص زاد قلوبنا نمضي إلى نور اليقين ونرتقي قمم الفلاح وتاجنا أخلاقنا للعلم كنا نلتقي والحب والإخلاص